Explain a bit about the, the storm in, in 1997, 12 years ago. So we don't get much rain here, maybe 300 millimeter per year, that much rain in a year. But uh, often we get very intense thunderstorms, especially in the summer. Then we, when we get the lows in the south, in New Mexico, bring the moisture here from the Gulf of Mexico and get pushed against the mountains. And if you get cold air on the other side of the mountains, then those clouds form, go up, and then it rains at the same place all the time. So, in one day in uh, July, I think 29th of uh, 1997, 12 years ago, then it starts raining in the mountains. I went to work all morning, it rained and rained and rained, and I said, well, that's okay. And I came home in the afternoon, I worried, didn't worry about this, but all afternoon it starts raining here. Only here and the uh, west of town. And I was leaving southeast of town, blue sky, no problems. And, and the police and the sirens and everything was going on at night. What's going on here? So it kept raining and we got about, um, about 250 millimeters of rain in one day. So, and of course, all the urban areas, a lot of pave, uh, pavement and the water start coming in the back. So the Hilton is like over there, yeah? so you, you can see this from, from the Hilton. In all this area behind this here, you see the railroad track? It's just big wide open pond there. There's a bicycle path, we'll see maybe a little later. A bike path that cuts across underneath the railroad track. This got clogged with debris, so the water started piling up on top of this thing. So what happened is that uh, the water that would normally drain over there, now start going on top the railroad tracks. The lowest point, you see it's almost horizontal, isn't it? But the lowest point was just right here. <coughs> so now the water starts overtopping that side there, okay? Mm -hmm. And there were people living in trailers right here. That was a little trailer park. So in small houses, you know, mobile homes and trailers. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden people start seeing the water coming off of there. And they said, what should we do now? One train came in with oh. the gas and somehow the train got derailed by the flood because the water started pushing the rail around and then so it got derailed and that thing got a spark and it's caught in fire. So on the news they came in at night, could see the water coming down, you can see the fire from the, the oil tank behind this thing and some ladies in their house had tried to cross here that little creek there was maybe that much water but it was draining fast here. And they get carried away, and five of them died right here. Mm -hmm. So since that time, they removed the people here, and there's no more trailer park or anything. So this is just, you know, kind of amazing because you would think here, if you build a house here, you're well protected by this thing. You would never think, you know, as a hydraulic engineer, you have hydrology and urban hydraulics. This is the safest place to be, you know. And it just turned out to be a deadly place here. It's very unfortunate. But, uh, so now I suggest we go to the next stop here. Huh? I don't want to do just a tour, but I want to show you primarily uh, the mining stuff. Huh? So we'll go gravel mining. So we'll drive a little bit. You just follow me, okay? Yeah. Tiny creek out there. Okay. Well, you see the bike path going uh, yeah, yeah. kind of tunnel out there. And it I'll show you on Thursday other floods we had in the mountains. But this one, 97, nobody thought about that here. Basically, basically. And move. Yeah, we may want to move here. And we have built a lot of detention ponds mm -hmm. as a result of this flood. It's a baby. Right there. It's a tiny little little creek out there. Uh -huh. And then um, you see how wide this this area is. So this is the tunnel for the bikers and there are a couple culverts down there for the main, main stream. Mm -hmm. So what happened, this got clogged with debris and whatnot. There was still water passing mm -hmm. through this, but 
imagine this area here, and that went up to over top the river. Yeah. So that's a lot of water coming in. You would think you'd never get that much rain, Maybe that much water from from this, uh, you know, this because the drainage area is like maybe 10 square kilometers. So the discharge here was 5,000 CFS, which is about um, 130, 140 meters per second. Pipes. And the culverts for the tank come out here. And they must be designed for about 10, 10, 15 cubic meters per second. But we got about uh, 140, 10 times, 10 times as much coming through this here at that time. 15 cubic meters per second, something like that. We got about 150 coming in at the peak of that flood there. So you get a lot of storage behind this thing. And, uh, 15 cubic meters. Yeah, about. Uh, a lot of water. It's the volume that, that struck everybody who has surprise because you have to feel, you know, it's about three meters and you saw the width of this thing. It's like 400 meters wide and it's just tremendous storage capacity behind this thing. and. People were used to expecting the water to come here. You see, we were in the parking lot over there in the first stop there. And they had trailer park right there. So they saw the water coming from way back there and they tried to escape. Say, hey, the water is coming. Tried to cross this shallow stream there. And they got just carried away. We did some experiments at CSU in the flume at the ERC. Mm -hmm. How much someone can sustain in terms of velocity. Mm -hmm. So if you have shallow velocity, then uh, you get you know, a shallow, shallow stream, you can get high velocity mm -hmm. or you get a lot of water and low. slow velocity. So the magic number is about 10, 10 square feet per second. So that you can stand, you know, human body can stand in a current there. Mm -hmm. So if it's five feet, we're in feet there, five feet deep, about two feet per second. Mm -hmm. Or two feet deep, five feet per second, that's about the limit where someone would get carried away. Mm -hmm. So we use 10 covering. as a kind of magic number there mm -hmm. for the flow. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of hydraulic parameter you never think of, but you know, <laughs> in hydro environmental and... Normally under uh, anything below the waistline, we could always wade into the river. There's no problem. Well, that's what you think, but this is when that shallow, <laughs> yeah. that because, was shallow uh, water. Yeah, you're talking about... Uh, Here it was yeah, about a foot deep. Water. About this deep, okay? Mm -hmm. But it was flowing very fast, five, six feet per second. So mm -hmm. carry the people down, unfortunately. Yeah. Through the well, you know, on Elizabeth, West Elizabeth Street, where we go to Street High, and uh -huh. going down to um, the um, International House, and then you go to the campus. Mm -hmm. Well, that area, people could kayak on the street. Oh, really? You had kayaks floating <laughs> down, paddling down the street, ring that flood there. And I would go to CSU campus and go down, and, you know, the, the library got flooded. Is the engineering building got flooded too. Is that when? 1960. 62. So that's like uh, 35 years ago. 45 years ago. After the flood? No, I had always an office at the ERC, but I was in the basement on campus. So then they renovated the whole thing and I got an office on the second floor. You saw my tiny office. But at the time I had tiles in my office and the tiles started curling up. Terrible. Coming down this way. So we'll go along the pooter and talk about gravel mining there. Okay. Now we're right here. You see CSU? CSU is between Prospect Mulberry around this this area here. CSU. And so here Spring Creek is coming here. That's a little creek tributary to the pooter. Okay. Fossil Creek is another one draining there to Fossil Creek Reservoir. And Horse Tooth Reservoir is behind there. So we have College uh, Lake here, Foothills, Foothills Trail, Foothills Campus is right here, Laporte. That's where the Engineering Research Center is. So campus is here, uh, Foothills Campus over there, and now we are right here. Huh? So, so the water came primarily from this area, started draining here this way and brought a big flood here. It's not big, it's like 10 square kilometers. Mm -hmm. This is one mile by one mile, so 1.6 kilometer, 1.6 kilometer. So a very small area that brought a lot of, of, of water here. So we're going to go in this direction here and I want to show you things for gravel mining. Yeah? So, but um, this map here is for biking. Yeah? It's for biking. 
So in the city we built an old network, you see a lot of people even today <coughs> which is biking up and down this area, can go along the river. Uh, we have a near timber line here, a power line. So near the power line there's a trail also coming this way to develop a whole network of baths. So we have, uh, let's see, yeah, coming this way, CSU campus, right there, and a biking trail. That's one of them here. The other one over there, Poudre goes all, all the way to Lions Park. Mm -hmm. They meet there. We'll go here to the Environmental Learning Center later on, huh? For, for uh, Aquila, huh? You want a coffee? I don't know if you want.